the baby you've been waiting for. Now, he, he didn't know if it was going to be a baby or an adult. He didn't know. But in this case, it was a baby. And Simeon went over. And Scripture says that he actually got to hold Jesus. Can you imagine getting to hold Jesus as a baby? How many of you are scared to death to hold a little baby? There are people, you know, what do I do with this? How do I do this? And so, but he kept, held Jesus, and he got to see the consolation of Israel. And he said, God, you have fulfilled your promise. Now I can die in peace because I see Jesus Christ. And so, also there was another person in the temple. Her name was Anna. She had been married seven years, and her husband passed away. And so she had been a widow for a long time. Some people say she was 84 years of age at the time. Other people were say, say that she was a widow for 84 years. Whatever the case is, she was an older, older woman. But she stayed at the temple, and she ministered there, praying and doing different things. And she, pro she probably knew Simeon. I mean, there, you know, he probably frequent, frequented the temple. She knew him. And she saw this scene and she walked up and she probably heard what he was saying. And she, man, she, she was a prophetess. And she got happy. She said, I bet she did a happy dance. She said, this is Jesus, the Messiah. And she was worshiping. She said, man, I've been waiting for this. And here he is in the flesh. The Messiah, the Son of God. And so she believed. So how many of us really believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God? Do we do like Susan in Miracle on 34th Street? I believe. I believe. I believe. Or do you do like Anna? You got a little happy dance going on. Yes, I do believe. I do believe. Yes, this is the truth. We can talk about faith, but faith is a noun. But faith can also mean trusting. And trusting, trust can be a noun or a verb. But when you are trusting in God, there's an action involved in that. You are actively trusting Him, believing Him, hoping in Him. And that's what we need to do is have an active faith. And act, not just words, but actions. Stories told that there was a church in a place and they were meeting, and right down, I mean, not a not hundred feet away, a, a person opened up a bar and had speakers, music, lots of people going in and out. They'd do it on Sundays, you know, when they were trying to worship going on. Wednesdays, they would meet Wednesdays and sometimes Fridays in, in the evening because people were working during the day. Things were just going on. I mean, it was hard to worship. Hard to concentrate and to really pray with all the noise. You know, the outside peripheral noise. So the people started praying, God, would you please close that bar? Would you please take care of that? Because they had gone to the owner and said, hey, this is where we're at, what we're doing. And uh, could you, you know, at least during these times, could you... Turn the music down or something like this. Or, and and they, they just pretty much laughed, ignored them. So they kept praying, kept persevering, kept going on. About three weeks later, the news came that the bar had burned down. <coughs> to the ground. And so the people, when they met the next time, they said, man, God answered our prayer. No, we didn't really think about it that way. God answered our prayer. That God took care of that place. Now we can worship. And what do y'all think, man? What do you think? And they were just having a prayer session. And one lady just spoke up and she said, well, you know, some days you just gotta put feet to your prayers. <laughs> <laughs> the people that believe put feet to their faith. They went, they listened. Joseph and Mary went to Bethlehem. You know, Zechariah, Elizabeth, John came into the picture. Uh, 
Herod did go after Jesus, but Jesus was gone. But he killed every child, two years old and younger, to see the male, to make sure that there was no other king, because he didn't want somebody else. So the thing is, with our faith, there many times we need to put feeds to our faith. We can talk about it, but it has to be action, too. There has to be action. So let's bow our heads, please. Last week we talked about hope, prophecy candle, all the prophecies that were given in the Old Testament Jesus, that Jesus fulfilled. And today we're talking about faith, the Bethlehem candle. Faith, basically, Joseph and Mary did go to Bethlehem. They did follow what they were directed to do. And Jesus came to reconcile people to God. That's why he was born. I mean, we can celebrate this, we have Christmas, but the, the, re the reason he came, he came the first time, he grew up, <coughs> he taught, but the end goal was the cross. He died for us on the cross. That's the, the cross was in front of him the whole time. He knew what was going to happen, but he went willingly, and he paid the price for our sin. And so he made the way for us that we can have eternal life, salvation, if we put our faith and trust in him. We have to apply it to our lives. It's not an automatic thing. But we have to come in by faith, trusting and saying, Jesus, I am a sinner. There's no way that I can go to heaven on my own. No way. But you've made the way for me. You lived here. You died. You paid the price for my sin. Uh, and you're buried, you rose again. And you're alive today. And you're coming back a second time for the rapture. And then you're going to come back the time after that, and you're literally going to touch down on earth. But the next thing we're looking for is the rapture when Jesus comes to get the church, to meet him in the end. But have you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ? Do you believe in him? Simple prayer. Jesus, I can't get to heaven on my own, but I'm trusting you. I believe who you are and what you've done, and I'm trusting you, putting my faith in you for salvation, being saved from the penalty of my sin, and for eternal life, which is not something in the long future, but it's right now we have eternal life. And that's an easy prayer to pray, but such a monumental and the words don't have to be exact. He knows your heart. And then for those who have already prayed that, and you've known Jesus Christ for a long time, why don't you just worship Him again and say, thank you for coming. Thank you for being who you are and for coming and for giving me eternal life and for salvation. I'm going to be standing by the nativity scene down front. If you'd like to come and talk with me, maybe you made that decision. You want to come and pray, or you want to talk to me afterwards, whatever you'd like to do, this is just an opportunity. Our instrumental is going to play one verse of the song, and then we'll be going. But use this time, use this time to talk to the Lord and do what you need to do.